Good afternoon, please have a seat. If I could see counsel at the bench briefly. Is uh, this guy J.P. Freeman keeps on filing motions? Is he? What is his affiliation? <clears throat> um, he's somebody that I stopped associating with. Um, I guess he and maybe is like close with him. I'd say, but uh, yeah, he's he has misrepresented his background when he first introduced himself to people. Said he was an ABC. Okay. Okay. Your Honor, the. Um, defendants call as their first witness, uh, Garrett Ian. Garrett, will you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I affirm. Thank you. You may be seated. You state for the record, please, your full name and your current address. My name is Garrett Ian. Last name is spelled E-A-N. And I currently reside at 17 Gardner Street in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. And all of those, could you, in responding to those questions, please consider them as being limited to events occurring on or after October 2013, unless I explicitly say otherwise. OK. Now, in, re in regard to you having, you aren't a defendant in this case. You have, correct? Yes. Okay. You have and are engaging in Robin Hood activity. Is that correct? Yes. Now, 
from the time frame of 2013 on, approximately with what frequency have you engaged in that? Um, if I go out, maybe I'm out three or four days per the week, and I'll be out maybe three to four hours per day. Now, has your Robin Hood activity, the frequency, infrequency of it, and I take it it's waxed and waned over time? Sure, you could say that. But has any frequency, the relative frequency or infrequency of it, in any way been affected by any action taken by this court or the New Hampshire Supreme Court? No. Now, in regard to um, the Robin Hood activity, and again, I'm talking now about over the last two years, can you describe in general physical, your physical location vis-a-vis -vis the parking enforcement officers as you engage in that activity? Sure. If I go out, uh, generally I won't begin filling meters until I find the parking enforcer because otherwise I could potentially be wasting money. Um, but when I do find them, if I do spot them somewhere, I'll try and fill what I empty meters I see in the distance between myself and them. And then uh, upon catching up to them, I'll try to get ahead of them, um, try and give the parking enforcer the, the whole breadth of the sidewalk, so, you know, not to p interfere with their personal space. And for the most part, I'm not interacting with them verbally, and usually they're not interacting with me either. Typically, are you behind them or in front of them? The ideal location to be for the activity is in front so that they're not able to approach any meters that are expired and write a ticket. Um, but of course, if they change their direction immediately while you were several feet um, in front of somebody, now you're uh, quite a large distance behind them if they change direction or if they go down an alley, et cetera. So if, if, if you're in front of them, you turn around and they're suddenly going off another direction, what do you do? Um, I'll generally try to follow them if it seems that they're going towards meters that may still be expired. Um, if I've cleared that area, if I know that I've just come from there and those meters are good, then I'll generally go to a different location and see if I can spot where it is they might next go to. Typically, how far away are you from them? Uh, generally, four to five car lengths. I'm not sure what that locates or calculates out to in distance, but um, if they're, the parking enforcers, if they're able to spot an expired meter from where they are, they're going to write it even if I get to it in time, so that further incentivizes me to be a little bit further out. Now, if this court were to uh, adopt the request of the city of Keene and issue an injunction, prohibit you from being within 10 feet of a parking enforcement officer, how, if at all, would that affect the work you're doing? That would not enable me to cross them on the sidewalk, I believe. I think it may require me to step out into the road um, to, be, to retain that distance if they are asking for 10 feet. Um, so I see that as a safety threat for myself. I don't really want to be walking in the road um, any more than I have to. Um, but otherwise, I don't understand or I'm not aware of any sort of proximity issue that's been raised in the time frame you've asked about from either enforcer. Um, I've been asked to stop talking and to stop stalking, but nothing has been told to me about, uh, about like being physically close to somebody. When you, you, you described a situation where you're in front of them, they shift direction and you have to go past them to get between them and the next set of parking meters. When you pass them, are you typically within 10 feet of them? Probably at the, the moment you're passing them, yeah, you probably come within about 10 feet. For how long a time frame are you been in that proximity? Two to four seconds, maybe, what it, depending on the speed that you're going versus how fast they're going. I generally am not running. Um, I may just like walk quickly, but uh, so yeah, depending on how quickly the parking enforcer is walking to. Now, in terms of the um, Robin Hood activity. Are you typically doing it yourself or as part of, and again, just since October of 2013, are you typically doing it yourself or as part of a group? It's mostly been myself. I'd say nine times out of ten. Um, occasionally someone will express interest and want to come out, and uh, there have been people that have visited Keene uh, wanting to come Robin Hooding, so I've brought them out. Um, 
and also my girlfriend was involved in that activity for a while too. It's been a while since she's been out. Um, so yeah, that's been the extent of it, I'd say, is I think the biggest group I've had, you could say, over that period of time is two people, maybe three, that were either Robin Hooding or interested in observing it. Um, the exceptions, I'd say, would be when the, the film crews were in town, um, as, as was pointed out, that like the film crews were acting independently of uh, what we were doing on certain days, but also interviewed us at some times. Now, there's been a claim that parking enforcement officers have been circled or otherwise obstructed in their movements. Um, and again, we're talking now since October 2013. Have you ever intentionally gotten in their way? No, I've never intentionally obstructed anybody I can think of, civilian or parking enforcer, while I've been out. Have you ever participated in a situation where the parking enforcement officers were surrounded or circled by multiple people? No. If it, I mean, I've, uh, there have been times when, like for example, when the film crew was in town, um, they were relative strangers to me. They were just people that were interested in observing what we were doing and asking us about it and also asking the parking enforcers. Um, they, they got somewhat close to the parking enforcers. I don't think there's anything necessarily illegal or, or threatening inherently about that. But uh, because I, I saw them doing that, I did decide to stay a little bit back because I know the, the parking enforcers do get nervous about people asking them questions being filmed close proximity. And, and the film crew was there for one day. Do I understand that correctly? Well, there's been a number of film crews. NBC was one of the larger ones that came. Um, there was also a I think country music television crew that came and was maybe three or four people. I don't know if they interacted with the parking enforcers or not. Um, and I think there may have been like a WBIN or maybe it was MUR was in town one day. And But I didn't myself observe them interacting with parking enforcers per se. Now there was testimony earlier about a, a free keen um, invention, intervention. What, what was, what's the actual name? I believe uh, the parking enforcers were referring to an event called Keenvention. V-E-T-I-O-N? -E uh, Keen and then V-E-N-T-I-O-N, Keenvention. And what, what is that event? It's an event that's hosted, um, I believe, by Ian Freeman. He's, I believe, like the head organizer of the event. And uh, it goes on at the Best Western here in Keene. In past years, I've been associated with it. I've spo I spoke at it last year. That was the only year I've attended, but... Um, I won't necessarily be attending this year, but if people want to go Robin Hooding uh, during that event, I'll be in town for that. Is it like, I mean, is the word vention sort of a takeoff on the word convention? I presume so. I didn't come up with it, so I couldn't, that would be just speculation on my part. Now, more broadly, there's been some references to free team. Um, what is free team? Free Keen is... Um, I'm going to object, Your Honor, this is beyond the scope of today's hearing. We've already been through this last hearing. How does this relate to... Yeah, to yeah. Didn't we cover this? Uh, and I actually can't recall. Uh, wasn't there some discussion about the, the, what Free Keen means, the, the last hearing? Right, which, which I'm not about to ask. But, but the, the reason why, why this is not only relevant, but, but actually important, is, is that one of the crucial issues here, I mean, given the fact that, you know, most of the defendants are no longer engaged in this and that most of the complaints are being made about people who aren't even defendants, the inference being drawn through some of the parking enforcement officer testimony was that my clients were responsible, directed, employed, um, utilized other people, essentially, on their, at their behest. Uh, and I think, I mean, that's the only way at this point the requested injunction makes any sense at all. So I think that, and it was a question they, they brought in testimony about an alleged mentally challenged um, girl who was alleged, I mean, th there was a slew of testimony they raised about other people. They raised, they raised free keen. They claimed people are being paid, employed, directed, et cetera, all of which is false. Um, but I think it's certainly an important area of testimony in regard to the hearing today. I'm not intending to talk about the political aspect of it. I'm talking about the, the organizational aspect of it as it applies to what's occurred most particularly in the last two years. And, as, as, to the, as to the scope of that question as, as now further explained, the objections overruled. Um, Garrett, in terms of free keen, 
um, what is it, or and that, I'm not talking now about ideology, I'm talking about organizationally. What is it organizationally? It is a blog. It is a place on the internet where different authors can post their opinions, their comments. And as far as I know, I know I'm not doing any editing. Uh, it's unedited. The authors have complete creative control on it. And I am one of the authors on Free Keen. Uh, Ian Freeman is the person who created the website. And there's a number of other people, some of them live in Keen, some of them do not, who also write on the site. And they're all listed on a, a little tab up there that says bloggers and shows everyone's name and picture. Now, does, does this organization have any officers? No. Is there anybody who um, basically maintains control over the organization? Well, it being Ian's blog and him hosting the, the server, I suppose if he was sufficiently offended or wanted to edit content by one of the authors, he could do that. I think maybe he's written about a few times when he has done that. But um, I don't edit anyone else's content, and nobody has edited mine from there either. But putting aside the blogging aspect of it and addressing directly Robin Hooding activity, when you yourself perform Robin Hood activity, is that in anybody else's direction or request, or is that your own decision? It's my decision to go out there and perform this activity. Is, is, have you directed anybody else to engage in Robin Hood activity? Um, beyond just offering people dimes who have wanted to participate with me and expressed interest, I haven't you know, given them any sort of other incentives to do so. Have you ever employed anybody to engage in Robin Hood activity? No, I have not. Um, now, I understand that, that a woman has participated in some, Robin act, some of your Robin Hood activity with you. Mm -hmm. and, and the inference has been made that you and she had, a, had or have a personal relationship. Sure, that was inferred by one of the parking enforcers. Okay. But is, in terms of this person who, who is engaged in Robin Hood activity with you, does she do that because you um, are requiring or, or asking her to do it, or is she doing it on her own decision making? Um, she initially was very interested in the fact that I was out there doing it and wanted to spend time with me out there doing it. So she would be out there doing it with me. There were a few occasions where she actually went out and did it on her own as well, and also shot her own video of her interactions with people. Now there's also reference to, to Free Keen um, somehow engaging um, young women who were mentally challenged. Um, to your knowledge, um, first of all, is there, is there any, um, are you aware of, any, of the Free Keen um, employing, utilizing, or otherwise uh, recruiting uh, anybody with a mental disability of any sex or any age? I was unsure what that could have possibly been a reference to. I think it could be the case of there are all sorts of people that have opinions about maybe something related to Free Keen, and that's somehow being associated with people associated with Free Keen, but I'm not sure why there would be any impression that people are being exploited, or as was referenced earlier. Thank you, Honor. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. And um, this term that's been bantied about, uh, Robin Hooding, that includes plugging meters, correct? Uh, that's, the, that's the primary way that you are effective in Robin Hooding, yes, is to plug meters that otherwise would get a ticket. And you can plug meters being 30 feet away from Jane and Lynn, can't you? It's possible. Now, another part of Robin Hooding is that... Um, it's basically a protest against government actions, isn't it? I suppose that's one way of categorizing it. Okay. Um, I don't consider it to be a protest per se, though I consider it to be just an effective action. 
It's uh, you can physically do something just by spending a little bit of money that makes a difference in someone else's day than not getting a ticket. So, I mean, I guess it's a, it may have protest element to it. Okay. And you can express and participate in this um, active um, action against the government 30 feet away from Lynn and, um, and Jane, can't you? Sure. <clears throat> Another aspect of robbing hooding is videotaping, right? Um, I suppose.